Welcome to this session, the Beaker extension for Jupiter, Beaker X. My name is Tejang Li, and before we know the story of Beaker X, let me first introduce myself and what I do. So, as you can tell from my name, I originally came from China. And my first name means Iron in Chinese. So, literally, I'm an Iron Man. So, that probably explains why I study engineer. I graduated from Tsinghua University in Beijing two years ago. And then I come to the United States and received a master's degree in computer science in Columbia University. And then I joined Two Sigma and become software engineer here. So in Two Sigma, we find values among the world's data. And since I joined Two Sigma, I've been working in a team where our responsibility is to help to build products, to help modelers to make data easy to discover, consume, visualize, and publish in Two Sigma. And Beaker X is just one of our approaches of accomplishing this goal. So today, I'd like to take this chance to talk about Beaker X, its history, especially its relationship with its predecessor, the Beaker Notebook. I'm not sure how many of you know what Beaker Notebook is, so I will give a short review of Beaker Notebook first, then I will talk about the path that Tosimga took to come from Beaker Notebook to Beaker X. And for the latter part of this session, I will give a live demo for BKX features. So let's start it with our vision for data science. What are we trying to deliver? So it starts with discoverable data. So we think that data is the foundation for this data science, and data must be easy to discover. Here, I say easy. I mean, not only type into Google saying, where can I find the oil production for the United States year by year? And you spend some time really discovering that data in the internet. But being able to integrate that data into your research process, into your actual code, in a, in a very straightforward way. So that's our definition of easy to discover. And after we have that data, the analysis and modeling portion of the research process is enshrined in a notebook. And we call that notebook Beaker. So basically, you're just writing code, doing small experiments in the notebook, and doing analysis. The analysis process is often tightly integrated with scalable distributed compute of multiple types. And finally, what is critical is that when you finish your work, you should be able to publish your work, to share your findings, and have ongoing collaboration with all your peers. So that's our vision for data science. Basically, it's a research uh, prototyping and publishing platform. So we decided to build Beaker. And we have the initial thought of Beaker in 2013. So we built Beaker based on some observations. Um, you know, in any scientific venture, there's one key to success is to write things down because it's either publish or perish. So in the image, you can see there's a notebook and there are many valuable uh, images ideas, formulas inside the notebook. We will never have a chance to know them if they're not recorded. So notebook, I mean the tools that we use to record things becomes the foundation for science. And we agree that notebook is a really good metaphor for user interface. So what we like to do is to upgrade this notebook to its digital age. And that was inspired by Mathematica, inspired by IPython, by the concept of REPL. So we decided to build a notebook. Then what else can we do to further enhance the ability of this notebook? And after examining a lot of notebooks, we come to a conclusion is that language matters. So notebooks are actually written in many different languages, and there are many different languages in the world. And each language is particularly good at conveying a certain idea. I think that's really similar to computer language. I mean, every programming language was designed for a reason, for a specific need, and has its own strength. For example, like uh, a, as a data scientist today, you may want to solve your interview problems with C++ for its efficiency. To talk to your data, you may want to use Python or R for their great library support. To talk to distributed clusters, you would use Spark. And to write mathematical formulas, you use LaTeX. To write documents for others to read, you use uh, Markdown. So actually knowing one single language may be not enough of doing those whole stack of process. And since we're inspired by IPython, we see the mo IPython was gaining some momentum, but it's only for the Python community. Well, coming from Two Sigma, where we support a wild mix of different languages, the notebook we pictured 
should foster collaboration without locking our modelers into a single programming language. So, in the notebook that we have built, we left language as a variable for users to choose. So here's a list of all the languages that we support in Beaker Notebook. Certainly, we'll see the Python and R at the very front of this list. And there are other popular choices like uh, Julia, Scala, Groovy, and so on. And don't forget there's JavaScript that's especially useful for building user interaction and visualizations. So basically, in the Beaker Notebook, that's, it is composed of multiple coding blocks, and we call them block cells. So each cell could be written in different programming language. Let's say, for example, you could use Python to read your data, do some pre-processing, and then you use R to do analysis, and then you use JavaScript to do the visualization. So we think that's natural, because if you have a physical notebook, you're actually free to write in any language that you master. And we think this is essential, because if you're doing research or open problems, you may not know what direction you may go, and you cannot anticipate what tools might be useful for doing this research. So this polyglot feature provides you with the freedom to choose any language that you think is the most appropriate of solving a part of your problem. And this is especially good for collaboration. We know, uh, as in the story of uh, the Tower of Babel, where the united human beings are trying to build up a tower high enough to reach the heaven. And when God knows this, God is unhappy. So he confounded the people's language and speeches so people will no longer be able to understand each other, to collaborate, and then that project fails. However, in Beaker, let's say a modeler speaking of Python and a modeler speaking R, and a front-end engineer who speaks JavaScript, they could collaborate with each other as a granular level of cell by cell, because we have made a universal object inside Beaker Notebook to transfer and store the underlying data to help build this workflow. So now the researching process is more like a symphony rather than a solo. Besides of those polyglot features, we also add some more stuff into the Beaker Notebook. Um, for example, we have an interactive table and uh, a reach charting library for time series analysis. That's based on our needs and our understanding for visualization. Also, we build a public server. Uh, so when user finish a notebook, he could upload his notebook to the public server. And it's more like a Google Drive. Then, it, then he will have a permanent link. Then he will be able to share this link to his peers to display his work and have ongoing collaborations. So Beaker has been very successful because modelers inside Two Sigma are using that to collaborate on their work. And it is very important for us because it's our first open source project or coming from a place where sometimes it was called a secretive world of finance. So that's a major step. And here we can see a lifeline for Beaker. In 2014, we made the open source beta. In the following year, we, bought, we built more uh, kernels and in 2016, we have the external Beaker Lab. That's exactly the publication server I was just talking about. However, in November 2016, we decided to do a pivot. And we do a pivot because we learn some lesson when we are moving towards the open source world. So the first lesson we learned is that building a community is really difficult. And the second lesson is, once a large community is formed around a very good idea, it's very hard for a single entity to keep pace. And yes, we learned that from Jupyter. So Jupyter is famous for its notebook. But over these years, it is not a notebook anymore. It's not a notebook alone anymore. It has many other uh, products that support Jupyter, such as the MB Present, the MB Viewer, MB Manager, MB Convert, and the new Jupyter Lab, Jupyter Hub. And when Jupyter starts to, to support multiple language kernels, it has gained a huge amount of users. So people are using it, people are loving it, people are building a lot of notebooks with Jupyter, this ecosystem. And it's used um, more than just coding, research, but also for education, media, publishing. I mean, the trend is just irresistible. So as an open source contributor ourselves, 
it is not a good idea to reinvent those views. Here the views, I mean the notebook interface and all the other functions already provided by these programs. And certainly you cannot reinvent an ecosystem by yourself. So the good things to do is to focusing on adding values to the existing ecosystem. We should add values of our own expertise, let's say our vision in data science, our expertise in data science into this existing ecosystem to utilize this network effect to benefit more users. So if we say Beaker was a fork from the original abstract concept of the IPython, then in the late of 2016, we need to make a decision that if we want to deliver our vision, we need to do a merge and join community and bring back all the goodness that we have created in Beaker Notebook. So we made a pivot. Well, this could be a hard decision because we are fear to move our three years of hard work and point it to a new direction. And we don't want to disappoint our users and we don't know if they would make that step with us or not. So we spent some time thinking, doing survey, and build a quick proof of concept to test our ideas. So our idea is not forking Jupyter. We're going to build an extension for Jupyter so that we could keep pace with the Jupyter development. Well, since the result of, is so good that we decided to keep on working to build Beaker X as the extension for Jupyter and in the future for Jupyter Lab. I'm very glad that we did it. After nine months of work, uh, in this year, August, before JupyterCon, the first version of BeakerX was released. And it is under active development up to now. So there are many uh, interesting facts uh, in this development process that I'd like to share. So one number is 94. This 94 means that 94% of the code in BeakerX was unmodified and reused from the Beaker notebook. Okay, so now you know that my job is to add a small portion of the remaining 6% of code to glue it to Jupyter. That may not be a good number to mention for my personal performance review, well, but that's why we have the confidence to do the pivot, and that's why we can do that really fast. Up to now, we have re, uh, received more than 1,400 stars, and we, our active users have made more than 200 forks and make their great modifications. We'd like to see that. So what we bring on the table is a unique addition to the Jupyter ecosystem. So we have provided with the following features, a time series visualization, more JVM kernels, including uh, Groovy, Scala, Crozier, interactive tables, and our vision of collaborative, co collaborative publication, true polyglot analysis, and data discovery. So now let's just move on to a demo to see what is BigRx. I will first go with a demo that mimic the, per, the whole process of research. That is by discovering some data and doing analysis and finally do the publication. So uh, let me zoom in a little bit so that you can see. Uh, based on the default interface of Jupyter, we add some new buttons here. So you can see this share button is used for publish. This uh, data set is for open our data browser. And this is for running the initialization cells, which is exactly the first one. You can see that when I open this notebook, the first cell is getting automatically run because uh, I set it here. So it's, I can see cell two bar, inference cell. You can see the mark is checked. So that helps you to do some things like initialization, imports, or um, setting API keys. So now let's just start with finding some data. So let's open our data browser. Uh, is it better for to me a little bit? Okay, so you can see we have a set panel and it shows uh, various uh, data from different data sources. We have been doing this in Two Sigma for years um, that you can, if you can name and describe a data set, you will be able to use that. And now we are building these ideas, building this prototype based on open source databases. So let's just take a look at this uh, global food price database. So you can see when I click on that, that shows a bunch of metadata showing this uh, details of this data, uh, refresh time, frequency, and we have, t we have option button here to open it in, in Enigma public, open source uh, 
database to have a quick look of all this data. So I say data must be easily integrated into actual code. So now we want to have this table in our notebook. So actually we provide a code sample to help you do this. And this code sample could be easily drag and drop to anywhere in your notebook. And after that, we could run this and the table we just saw goes into your notebook and becomes a pandemic frame for you to, mani to manipulate and do further investigation. Certainly there are other uh, databases and certainly we can do uh, like a search here. So this is provided by Kwangdo for financial data. And uh, let's say I want to know something like the rupee dollar exchange. So I will use this code example. Actually, I already have it here. So let me run this. Uh, let me see there's a table, a normal table, but it's uh, less interactive because if you want to find some pattern in this data, we may want to do something like a sorting or filtering. And so we can use speaker X interactive table. So that's just simply import everything from Beaker X, then we call this data structure again, and that will be rendered in an interactive way. So in this table, you can see we can do sorting on a specific column, and we can change the position of a column, and certainly we can change the size of a column, and let's say we can change it to normal sorting. As I click, there's a menu on this column that provides you with a bunch of actions that you can do. For example, we can do a filter here. Let's say I want to find uh, the high prices which are less than 1,000. So dollar, we're referring to the current uh, value. So you can see that actually helped me do a filter. And certainly I can refer to other columns, like let's say high value less than last, which is not possible. So let's plus one, 10. That's done by a simple JavaScript eval to help you do something like a filter. And we have some visualizations on this table. For example, you can see there's a heat maps, the data bars, and color by unique. And we can do that by uh, keyboard shortcuts. Let's say I have a heat map here. I can, I can do a data bar here. Certainly I can color all of them by unique. And now I can reset all these interactions. So if you want to Let's say I'm very interested in this part of data. So I can do a rectangle selection without selecting all the columns and all the rows. And then I can do a clip to clipboard. Let's say I have a Google sheet here. I go to here and press Control V. You can see the selected data as long as the, as well as the column information are preserved when you do the copy. So table is good, but charting is better. Now we want to do more visualizations. A uh, simple one with matplotlib. It's not it's that interactive. Basically, it's just an image. So with Beaker X and visualization, we have a better plot. So you can see we have crosshairs. And when we're moving to this big drop that we're interested, we can see there are two tips. Maybe hover on that. And we want to see clearer. Let's me, let me just do a zoom in, drag and maybe filtering out some uh, lines. I can do a double click and recite this uh, interaction. So let's say, wow, this is good. So I'd like to include that in my paper. So we have a chance, uh, we have an option of saving that into an SVG or PNG, even in a high DPI. Let's say that's 4X, that's much clearer so that you can include this image anywhere else. Well, good, since we have, find, we have some findings, now we want to share this result. So we can do this with a publication. Here, we will publish this as anonymous gist to GitHub, and we will use MB Viewer to open our notebook. So this is getting upload, and a, a new window with MB Viewer will open. So now you have a link, you can share this with all your peers. Now let's go have a demo of the polyglot. That's the, we will call them auto-translation. So here you will see we have uh, in our in, uh, inner cells, we made a beaker X as a runtime object. This is the universal object I was just talking about. And the data we are going to read from CSV into a pandas data, into a pandas data frame. And by the way, you can see the pandas data frame is 
rendered with a beaker interactive table. So that actually shows the sleep and wake time for a person. And then we'd like to put that data into our universal object so that JavaScript script could read those data. Then I have a cell to write some HTML, uh, basically just define the styles that may be used for visualization. And now I have a JavaScript cell, which called the D3 library. And here I pass in the sleep and wake time in our universal object and pass into a JavaScript variable. And after I execute this cell, the D3 visualization is here, actually showing the sleep cycles. Uh, quite healthy, by the way. And now like a, uh, let's see another example. So that's a graph visualization. Actually, this uh, co small code of Python just generated some nodes and graph, just like a social network. And HTML cell, JavaScript cell. And then finish that. That gives me a good interactive visualization for social networks. This is good because uh, I actually didn't write code from scratch. These two are just examples that I copied from the D3 library, uh, the website. So that this is called collaboration. You are collaborating with someone in, in the world who is, have his expertise in JavaScript. And what we have to do is to write some code and prepare the data, pass in the data to the library, then you can copy and paste the code as you wish. So let's have a, a quick look at a, a, a groovy kernel. That's one of our, our GVM kernels. For now, Beaker X notebook, uh, Beaker X support Groovy, Clojure, Java, Kotlin, Python, SQL, and Scala. And this Groovy is just an example. So we will see all the uh, APIs for plotting and table are working here. And certainly you can use code to selectively show some of the columns. And you can use code to do visualization on your table, as well as do more plotting, side-by-side -side histogram, beautiful to use. And you can use that to build some custom actions. This may be interesting. Um, so that you can see that the cell in the very bottom is tagged by run tag. And we have made an action here that at every point will click. If you click on every point, that will trigger the run tag to run. So you can, so you can see if I click here, shows I'm clicking on orange points, five, five, and I click here, uh, green points, two, four. So actually we have a lot of things like even listeners that help you to do interactive programs. And I, know, I don't have time for more demos, but certainly you can see a lot of new demos we created here. Uh, so we have uh, more plotting and chatting. We have support easy form, widgets, interaction. And now we have made connection with other libraries like uh, TableSaw, Deep Learning 4J, and DataVac. So actually they are working very well with uh, Beaker X for now. And this actually, you can get this from our website. That is uh, beakerx.com. So everything will be here for your download or documentation. Yep, that's for the demo. And certainly we are working on, very, on various topics to make BKX more powerful. So we are working on migration to Jupyter Lab, and we are happy to announce the 0.9.0. It's a release this morning, and BKX is now working with Jupyter Lab. So it's great to know. And we are going to build deep integrations with Spark. So you can see that's in our vision, the scalable distributed compute, which I didn't demo. So we want to build more deeper integration with Spark. And we are going to support data grades for streaming table to increase the efficiency. And certainly we will continually working on the true polyglot analysis and the more powerful data catalog. Yeah, besides those features, this project is also about continuing engage and uh, meaningfully engage into the open source world. And to that end, we have formed a partnership with NimeFocus, and we have sent code upstreams, um, and we have engaged with the Jupyter community. For example, this year, February, uh, Brian Granger, Jason Grout, and Chris Colbert, they join us in TS Open. 
So that's a Two Sigma hack day open to all engineers inside Two Sigma where they can hack in on uh, all kinds of projects, not only Jupyter, but also Jupyter Lab, IPython widget, and things like that. We do this because we know we have taken very precious fortune from the open source world, and now we want not only contribute back, but also help in shaping this ecosystem. Well, the new Jupyter Lab with a bunch of astonishing features, such as the new user interface and the real-time collaboration, really give us a promising future for this ecosystem. And personally, I myself, I'm very excited to work on this project because we are eagerly looking forward to, and we are working very hard to build a notebook for the new era, a prototyping, researching, and publication platform for the 21st century. So that's the story I want to share about BKX. Thank you. Yeah. Um, before we go to the QA session, mm -hmm. I'd like to say a special thank and introduce someone who is my close workmate, who has teached me a lot, who has been leading the development of both Beaker Notebook and Beaker X, who has created a great electric, electric ship and being called a software artist from Two Sigma, Scott Draves. <laughs> you know, Scott is very experienced and technical, and he has been leading the development for Beaker Notebook, so I'd like to invite him along with me for this QA session for questions. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, oh, so. What are the plans for the deeper integration with Spark? Uh, the question was, what are the plans for deeper integration with mm -hmm. Sparks? Uh, actually, we want to build more um, interactive widget with Spark. So actually, you can adjust uh, setting the class and the numbers that you can uh, use Spark, uh, not only with code, but also with interactive widget, like start a job, see the details of job, etc. Yeah, so uh, briefly. Briefly, it would be uh, a Spark configuration panel and um, the ability to see the progress, uh, the complete progress information of all the jobs and stages of your Spark job, the ability to cancel a cell properly, because canceling just the execution in the kernel is different from canceling on the cluster. And um, we had a good integration support in Beaker Notebook, and we're going to improve and reproduce that in Beaker X. Thank you. Any more questions? Well, you can feel free to come up to the podium and ask the gentleman questions if you want. And thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank, thank you. you.